The Maker Fair featured many transportation ideas, some whimsical. Some serious, some self-powered. Some powered with fossil fuel. I saw the huge gas octopus, I wondered what they could be thinking. We have talked a lot about the use of fossil fuels and climate change. We definitely have to go get a look at the sustainable energy choice, solar powered vehicles. And so we are interested in exhibits such as the Spartan Superway project using solar power. This is an interesting project. What do you have to do with it? So yeah, this is the uh, Spartan Superway ATN, as we call it. It's an automated transit network, which means that uh, we've got a bunch of driverless pods that um, go directly from point A to point B. It's a new concept for public transportation, where you don't have to wait around for a bus or a train to come. And once you're on it, you're not going to have a bunch of people overcrowding around you, because it's just you and whoever you're traveling with going directly from the station you got onto and getting off at the station you get off at. Um, all completely automated. Uh, driverless and also interconnected so it automatically calculates the most ideal route for you to take. Um, I'm Max, I'm part of the bogey team. The bogey is this metal part up here that has the cabin suspended from it so it deals with the weight of the cabin um, and it has all the propulsion and steering and stopping all takes place up here. What we have is we have a suspended system and the reason for that is we've got a much narrower footprint compared to a, to a uh, supported system. It also means it's up higher, so we're now independent from surface traffic. What are the best public transit systems in the world? The ones that I know about, the best I've ridden on is the Metro in Washington, D.C. I remember getting to, into the airport at 2 in the morning thinking it was going to be impossible. I walked out and got, on, got onto a Metro car in five minutes. It, because it doesn't have to worry about surface traffic. It's never, you know, it doesn't have to wait at, tr at, at junctions. It doesn't have to deal with cars, pedestrians walking in front of it like the light rail does in San Jose or like Caltrain. Train. Um, if you, when you're elevated above the road or you're below the road, which we can't do here in San Francisco because of earthquakes, you, you're, you're completely liberated from all the traffic woes. So what we were able to do is we collaborated with Bank Gustafsson from Beamways and we came together with this bogey design and guideway design. Now the way it works is normally when this moves, it's only supported on one end. As you can see, only the red wheels on one side are moving. Um, whenever you get to a guideway switch, another rail comes in on this side and engages this wheel and this wheel here. And on the bottom you've got the steering arm. Now, the way the steering arm is now, it's going to travel to the left. But if you wanted to go to the right, the steering arm would swing around, engage the rail on the other side, and it would simply travel in that direction. The other uh, motivations we had for having a suspended system is, if, is that we wanted to put solar panels along the top. And our solar team has done a lot of calculations and a lot of work that shows that modern solar panels, if we were to put them down the top of the, of the guideway, we wouldn't even have to put them everywhere. They would generate enough solar energy, net energy, that the system would pay for its own energy consumption. So this scale model was built by last year's students. It was before the, um, the bogey um, and, and guideway design was completed, so it's just made the way that they could make it. It's a square cross section with a groove on the bottom. So it has problems when you go over guideway junctions, you've got bumps and whatnot. But um, the controls team has developed a small bogey that fits in here and is capable of navigating this whole system um, in much the same way that a full-size pod car would navigate the transit network. This has all the elements that you'd find in an ATN. You've got junctions for offline stations, you've got three of them, and then you've also got junctions for kind of shortcuts. So for instance, if you were coming from that station over there to this one here going this direction, you wouldn't have to go all the way around because you don't need to go past that station. So Corey, tell me more about this uh, scale model that you've got going here. So we actually have two scale models going on right now. We have the 112 scale of the 
full scale design with the suspended guideway and whatnot. This is the mechanical engineer's development platform. And we also have another scale model, which is line following robots, that is the development platform for computer engineers. So they're using the line follower platform because it's significantly quicker and cheaper to create more intricate track designs. And so they read the lines, whereas we don't need to read lines since we're enclosed. So we just read these little markers underneath the track and that lets the pod know where it is. What kind of a computer does it take to coordinate the, the motions of the cars? These guys are working with the SJ-1 board. It's a microcontroller specific to the computer engineering department at San Jose State University. What's it called? It has an ARM Core M M3 processor. Uh, we are also using theirs, but on our platform it's strictly for the wireless communication. We use Arduino Unos to control all of our sensors and motors. Tell us who you are and how you got into this and what this demonstration does. All right, so my name is Eddie Velasquez, and so what we're demonstrating here is our control system for the Spartan Superway. We're using a line follower. We have some sensors that detect the tape, and as they're detecting the tape, we have some markings along the track that represent different locations along, on the, along the system. And we have these pods so that they're communicating with a central computer and they receive new destination information each time they reach a station, similarly to how it would be in a full-scale model. Um, and so every time it reaches a station, it communicates with our central computer to tell it, hey, I'm ready for a new destination, go ahead and send me new instructions. And as it navigates, it's actually, uh, it calculates the path on its own at, at, upon arrival of a new destination. As far as how I got into the project, we uh, so we're, we're a group of computer engineers from mm -hmm. SJSU, and uh, Dr. Furman, the late lead advisor, actually uh, came into our class and presented about this project and the need for some computer engineers. So we decided to go ahead and volunteer and help them out with the control system. We're, we're quite proud of uh, what, what we've learned and what we've achieved, and there's still so much more. Oh. Yeah, where do you think it'll go from here? Uh, I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done with the control system. Uh, definitely before anything can be said about a full-scale system. Uh, a couple things I think going forward are more of the safety features, uh, collision avoidance, uh, communication between the pods so that they're able to communicate in case there's a failure with the master. Uh, so we want them to be able, so that they're not isolated, but rather they can talk to each other without the need of a master controller. So a little more programming to be Right, done. right, definitely. Yeah. Brian, good to see you again. Tell me a little bit about this car. So this is a, a base mock-up of the space you might find in a minimal size pod car. It um, fits all of the ADA standard and sizing, so that um, to give a sense of the of the spacing, that it's uh, a generally a more, more comfortable ride than you would have in an automobile. A little bit more human space, there's uh, enough distance to hold a bicycle to cover that last few blocks. Folding up seats, wheel our wheelchair back. Um, but generally speaking, it's just, just give a sense of what this might look like in the real world. Dr. Furman, how did this thing get started? This effort is year two of a interdisciplinary senior project which has also expanded to several other departments including urban planning and uh, the industrial design department as well as business and with some other involvements at the Presidio uh, Management School, uh, some business students there. So what it's about is uh, creating a solar powered ATN system and we're trying to push the development envelope as well as trying to uh, make it known to the public that there is a new paradigm coming for transportation we think is ATN and sustainable transportation in the form of solar powered ATN. So the students have you know in the background there you probably already looked at uh, designed a 16-foot section for the Maker Faire here of a guideway for a, sus a suspended uh, cabin and a bogey um, and we've got solar panel uh, above the guideway for collecting solar energy we have some other students that have been working on a low-cost uh, development platform for ATN uh, that could be used in other classes so 
it's all about interdisciplinary engineering and other uh, disciplines to get together to do something that hasn't been done before uh, in the sense of we're trying to get this uh, solve our problems with fossil fuel uh, and uh, the terrible problems that we have with traffic and other parts of transportation.